Good evening from New York. I'm Chris Hayes. There is a lot going on tonight. Just over a year and a month since candidate Trump called for, and I quote here, a complete and total shutdown of Muslims entering the United States. President Trump today signed an executive order aimed at fulfilling at least part of that goal. Hewing closely to the rhetoric of banning entry to the United States based on country of origin and possibly even religion, here is the president today. I'm establishing new vetting measures to keep radical Islamic terrorists out of the United States of America. We don't want them here. We want to ensure that we are not admitting into our country the very threats our soldiers are fighting overseas. And this is the protection of the nation from foreign terrorist entry into the United States. We all know what that means. Protection of the nation from foreign terrorist entry into the United States. That's big stuff. Administration did not release the lengthy, complicated executive order until hours after the signing, but it suspends the issuance of visas and other immigration benefits to people from, quote, countries of particular concern, countries designated in a prior law by Congress as Iraq, Iran, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, Syria, and Yemen. The executive order also stops the refugee program altogether for all refugees from anywhere for four months pending review and installs an indefinite ban on Syrian refugees. But it makes special allowances for victims of persecution who are part of a minority religion in that country, a carve out that would apply to, for instance, Christian refugees in Muslim majority countries. The State Department in a statement said it is working with the Departments of Homeland Security and Health and Human Services to put the executive order into effect. Reaction from lawmakers has already been harsh. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer tweeting, there are tears running down the cheeks of the Statue of Liberty tonight. Congressman Seth Moulton of Massachusetts saying in a statement, President Trump is leading our country out of fear instead of facts. His executive orders banning refugees and immigrants from some Muslim majority countries to the United States plays right into the hands of our enemies. I am ashamed he is our president. Refugee-centered organizations like Amnesty International, Catholic Relief Services, and the International Rescue Committee have expressed grave concern with the executive order. Amnesty International USA saying in a statement, this puts anti-Muslim bigotry into policy and is eerily reminiscent of the kinds of religious discrimination we've documented in countries like China and Iran. The executive order President Donald Trump issued today is cruel, inhumane, and violates international law. Joining me now, MSNBC chief legal correspondent Ari Melbourne. It's great to have you here because all of us have been frantically attempting to work our way through what is very complicated. Let me just say immigration law is like the craziest, most complicated area Swiss of law. Cheese. Um, let's just break it down quickly. There's, so there's one component, which is visas, <clears throat> right? What's going on on the visa front? Uh, this is suspending visas in the way that people would normally be cleared to come in based on a host of considerations. So the main thing here, the biggest power here, uh, is that it's completely temporarily suspending immigration from that list of countries you mentioned. And that means uh, grad students, med students, doctors, engineers in an oil field in Houston who's coming over from, say, Iraq. Right. Uh, so, all of it. So as a first step, it's not vetting of any kind, extreme or lax, it's shutting the door to those countries. Uh, this has been pointed out by others, and I'll stress it here, the opening provisions, the starting language of this thing says we have to worry about immigration given 9-11. And this doesn't do anything with regard to the home countries of the attackers of 9-11, of Saudi Arabia, UAE, or Egypt. It doesn't touch those countries in any way. What it does go on to do is, as you mentioned, take on those seven countries. What is a clever legal strategy here that might actually really matter is those countries are based on a law that cited them in a different context, but cited them as dangerous. It's a law that Congress passed and that President Obama signed. It was a law that basically said you could have a waiver of the normal visa requirements if you were from a favored country like, say, England. But if you stopped in a dangerous place like Syria or Iraq, you don't get your waiver anymore. And they've I taken see. that list, that's sort of a danger list, that's and now they're very, saying, yes. hey, if you come from that country, you don't get in at all. So I want to be, like, really clear here, right? Um, because this is not, you know, what the president when he was running and called for as a temporary ban on all Muslims coming into the country. This is not that. No. And almost certainly would not have been held up in court, I think. There's a general feeling. We heard from many constitutional, right. constitutional experts who said that probably would not, but right. that's an unknown. And right. there have been times, if you go back far enough, not precedents right. that are popular, but you go back far enough, there were restrictions on Catholics and on Jews, if you go back far enough. Okay. And finally here, refugees. 
indefinite ban on all Syrian refugees, which is the place that is producing the most refugees in the world right now. It is a maelstrom of unceasing horror. Uh, and a ban, a form of ban on all refugees everywhere. Correct. This is a suspension of the entire refugee program. So it's saying even people who are facing religious discrimination, the type of people the United States usually prioritize to some degree because of what they were up against, nothing for a while while they put this review on, and nothing from Syria at all. That is, a, that, again, that's a slam door. Uh, and so what you see in this as well is opening the door to further bans because it says in this new order that the DHS and the Secretary of State can then propose new countries, okay? Right. Uh, Donald Trump, if you're watching, because mm -hmm. I know sometimes you watch, what he may decide is, oh, wait, I can add to that. As I understand, this helps me. So if I heard, oh, maybe I should ban Saudi Arabia, right. well, the DHS can do that. I'm not suggesting that. I'm not making a policy recommendation right. one way or other to the president. Um, but this is an order right. that basically gives a lot of power in the executive to do this. The reason why it's not a religious ban, which is important, is, as I mentioned, it uses other criteria. Right. It does mention things like honor killings in its preamble. Right. Um, but we have to be fair. This is not a no. religious test as written. All right. All right. Melbourne, thank you very much. Thank you. Joining me now, Senator Jeff Merkley of Oregon. And Senator, the argument that the preamble of the text of this executive order made and the argument made by proponents of the president's policy is that basically better safe than sorry. We care about American well, and American lives, and you just don't know. You gotta be you gotta be careful with these folks. What do you say to that? Well, Chris, Lady Liberty is crying tonight. Uh, the, her, she didn't say, give me your poor and your tired and your huddled masses, you're going to be free, only if they are this religion or that religion or this ethnicity or that ethnicity. And we really know that the most vetted group coming to the United States are our refugees. They go through a two-year process and blocking out uh, women and children and interpreters who have enhanced our national security abroad is is really uh, a mistaken direction to go. Meanwhile, it's going to throw into chaos the visa waiver program with Europe. All these European nations, uh, all but five of the uh, the European Union come here under the visa waiver. They only can come under that program with the highest passport requirements, including a biometric information encoded into a chip in the in the in the visa or in the passport so it's a it's been a very successful system that has allowed the flow of individuals from Europe to the United States and from some other nations as well that's going to uh, go into chaos and that's before we get to this uh, basically this assault on uh, on Muslims um, what do you say to those who Ari Melber said that you know this is very carefully crafted to not specify a religion. In fact, there's, so there's two things going on. One is that it's a set of countries, all of those countries, a Muslim majority. Another portion of the executive order says uh, there will be preference given to religious uh, people, victims of religious persecution, if those people are minorities, religious minorities in a, a country that's a majority other religion. Uh, you can imagine, uh, say, Coptic Christians or uh, uh, Syrian Christians. What do you say to those who, who say, look, this was crafted so it doesn't actually use Islam or religion as a test? No, clearly uh, uh, those who are lawyers have gone through this to try to find a foundation on which they can pass a constitutional test. But understand this, uh, this ban on folks coming from uh, seven Islamic countries, primarily Islamic countries, uh, is going to be perceived much as the NSEERS program was previously, as a previous program that didn't result in a single prosecution. It was terribly ineffective in terms of detecting anyone who wanted to do our country harm. But what it did very very well was offend the entire Islamic world and feed into the ISIS rhetoric in which they are essentially saying the United States wants to conduct a war on Islam so we're going to conduct a war on them so this really feeds those fires and endangers our national security um, there there is uh, a bunch of people noting today uh, that that uh, today is Holocaust Memorial Day. Um, I saw the check in former Czech ambassador Andy Shapiro uh, tweeting his uh, I believe mother's visa into this country that saved her from uh, mass murder in Germany when she was when she was a Jew. Um, do you think you have the better side of the political argument when you are when you are making a moral case for why America has some moral responsibility to take in people fleeing the ravages of war? 
I tell you, it's been so fundamental in our history. We are a nation of immigrants. Unless you're 100% Native American, we all came through the process of immigration, our, our parents, grandparents, et cetera. And it's been that mixture that has really been a tremendous strength of, of America. And so for us to now say we're not going to look at the problems of the world and admit those who are troubled, well, none of, virtually none of us would be here if that had been <laughs> the case uh, when, when our ancestors arrived. And so I, I feel it really great, uh, both on the religious side, as we mentioned the religious uh, non-discrimination, non freedom of religion in the United States, and it, it also goes against the grain of what has made America very strong. And so uh, all of that, and then you throw in the fact that this strategy is going to be a major source of recruitment for terrorists around the world. Uh, so it's a, it's a, as a complete set, you asked me about the politics of it. I don't know about the politics of it, but I know mm. it goes against our fundamental principles and makes us in a more dangerous place. All right, Senator Jeff Merkley, thanks for your time tonight. Thank you. Now, Representative, State Representative uh, Ilhan Omar. Um, Representative, first I want to just ground this in, in you and your story. You yourself are a refugee. Can you just explain to us the circumstances under which you came to this country? Uh, hi, Chris. Um, yes, I am a refugee. My family arrived here um, uh, from Somalia via Kenya um, in 1995 after spending four years in the refugee camp and going through an extensive uh, vetting process um, to come here. Um. What, I guess the context that I, I, I wonder if you could illuminate is, what would push a family to leave the place that they live in and love and go into, say, a camp and try to come to this country? Yeah, I mean, the, the circumstances my family um, ended up leaving our home country was uh, because there was a civil war, um, and it was no longer safe for us to, um, to be in that country. And so we fled um, and seeked refuge in uh, Kenya and entered a refugee camp in Mombasa. Um, and after uh, a long time in the refugee camp, we were fortunate enough to get the opportunity to resettle here in the United States um, through the refugee resettlement program that um, the Lutheran Services um, provided. That uh, all refugees uh, entry into the country, if I'm reading this executive order correctly, uh, has been suspended immediately for four months. All Syrian refugees from the, the sort of worst civil war in the world happening right now has been suspended indefinitely. Um, what's your response to those actions? It's really sad and disappointing, um, and uh, and it's you know it goes against the. Um, fundamentals of, I think, what our nation stands for, um, uh, for us to uh, create a, a, a Muslim ban, essentially, um, for refugees coming from Muslim-dominated countries, I think, would go against um, what we believe to, to be um, our foundations of being a welcoming country where we allow um, strangers to come seek new opportunities and to see themselves as um, part of uh, the American um, foundation and uh, to seek their American dream. Um, it's also, you know, important for us to note that um, many of the people that uh, this particular executive order bans are coming from countries that um, the United States foreign policy has contributed in destabilizing their countries, and they're living under a civil war that we've um, aided in, in uh, helping them seek a democratic nation. And for us to turn their back on them right now, I think um, it's sad, disappointing, and, uh, and every American who believes that um, furthering democracy in the world is a value we all uh, believe in should um, stand up and voice their opposition and concern um, to this executive order. It is really important for us to recognize that extremism does not have 
um, a religion, it doesn't have uh, a nation, it doesn't um, live in uh, one continent. Um, here in the United States, we face uh, extremism every single day, um, and we are facing more of a threat from a lone gunman that goes into uh, a school and shoots up young children. We face more of uh, a threat um, from a, a lone gunman who goes into um, a movie theater and, um, and, and shoots up uh, um, people enjoying an evening watching movies. Uh, and so we have to realize that um, what this executive ban does is to create a divide, hmm. exploit um, the fear that we have and the ignorance that we have of people of a different faith, of different nationality. And that is un-American to me. I uh, came here um, because my dad and grandfather believed in the American exceptionalism of coming to a country that was very welcoming, and it's a, that's a country um, of immigrants, unless you are uh, a Native American. Uh, we all have a history um, of being immigrants to this country, and it's that is sort of the founding principles. Um, you know, the, the, there is a, um, a, a saying that America is a place that is supposed to welcome uh, everyone. All right, Representative Omar, I appreciate your time tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.